Now, on the way to the main city here, there is this guy, Onaga, who's a merchant. Um, I'm going to sell off everything that I have that I don't need, and he has a couple items that I might buy, and I'll show those to you if I actually buy them. I ended up buying one item from him. Uh, this Shield of the Magi, you can sometimes get it later depending on what happens inside, but I just want to get it now and get it out of the way. There aren't that many actually items left that I'm going to buy, so it costs 200,000, but I still have almost half a million gold, um, and I'm not too worried about it. It's, it's an item I'll use to the end of the game. The only real perk to it is that it's a shield with a decent AC bonus uh, and no arcane spell failure. Um, it means I can stop casting the shield spell because, well, yeah, it's redundant. The other item that he has that you might consider buying are these Imiskari Bracers of Immortality. Um, I like my Bracers of Armor better, though you could make a reasonable argument for buying these. There are two ways in to this area. You can take the f back door that Fentomy gave you the key to, or you can just sort of talk your way through the front. Um, I'm going to have to... St I'm going to start by talking my way through the front because there's some opportunities to gain influence with the companions, depending on your uh, what you say. And more or less the guards say, uh, <laughs> well, you know, get in line. The uh, guys at the door here are more normal hag spawns, so they are... Uh, um, let's say that Gan is more attractive, though even he's a little freaky looking. And we're going to say speaking to Gan is much more pleasant. And uh, that's some influence. There's also these Telthors here. If you're, for some reason, low on spirit energy and you want to tank up, uh, you can talk to these Telthor, or just walk over near them and use Suppress. Um, since they're all out here, they, uh, there's a lot of spirits and it really helps Suppress to, be, uh, to have um, spirits to work with. And uh, they're more or less confused that Oku is with you. And they're more or less trying to talk to Oku, assuming he's in charge, because... We'll let Oku talk. And more or less, they are, they're not behaving correctly as beasts, and Oku is, um, wants to discipline a wayward pup. And, uh, <laughs> he more or less just scares them off. You can also, if you're just trying to clear the path, um, just use Provoke Spirit to get past them. The next uh, victim on the not-so-exclusive guest list is this uh, Mind Flayer over here. I put on my Diplomacy gear. I'm casting Greater Heroism, so I have you know, a little more skill. And I'm going to go have a chat with him. And he asks why you're here. And you can tell him the Coven isn't seeing anyone. And you can just sort of butter him up. And, uh... Yeah. So, th we can talk about the Githyanki. Um, and you can say that you escaped civil Githyanki on the way here. And try and bluff him. And it, I have very little skill in either lore or bluff, but it doesn't take much. He gives you an amulet and runs away. Well, shuffles away. The amulet he gives you, I, I'm actually sort of unhappy I can't use it. It's quite good. It gives plus five to AC, so it's a you know, typical amulet of armor. Plus six constitution, plus six wisdom. Um, if I were actually using Kaelin, I would probably give it to her. Uh, as it is, I'm just going to sell it. Our next guest is Gruff. Um, and uh, he... Tells me, he knows that I'm a spirit eater, somehow, and uh, he says I betray the gift. That's interesting. We've heard it referred to as the gift before. I wonder if uh, 
he knows anything about that little girl. Anyway, um, and uh, he says, I would hasten your inevitable destruction, and uh, it's like, well, uh, we can try that if you want. And uh, Oku agrees. I, I guess he still wants to kill you, even if he, you know, doesn't hate you anymore. And he kind of hates what you are, not what, what you do. Anyway, Griff challenges you to a fight, more or less. And since we're just trying to get people out of the way, killing him is, uh, you know... Hey, I was willing for, to try a more peaceful solution, but I don't care. I cast Foundation of Stone because they do use Knockdown. I'm not going to bother being very, sort of... They're, they're not hard at all. They do have a fair number of hit points. I suppose I will have to recast some stuff. Alright, they're just annoying me. And that's that. One less uh, petitioner on the way. Um, I'm going to leave this mysterious meat here. I'm actually going to leave um, the rejuvenation salve on his corpse as well, just because I, uh, and the, well, hang on to Leanna's key, I may actually need it. Uh, just because both of those are plot items that I can't use anymore. And that leaves us with one last thing, a Ganassi Prince. We can have a chat with the Ganassi Prince and ask him what the problem is. And what he wants to talk about. And, you know, he more or less is not very cooperative. See if uh, the guard can tell us anything about the petitioners. Now... You can talk um, to them and they more or less say that the, the waiting list is kind of a joke. They're not actually ever going to see any of them. So apparently the Ganassi lost his spot in line because he had to go to the bathroom. And you can be diplomatic about it. And uh, he'll go away. And we've gotten rid of all the other petitioners. So now we can go back in. On the other hand, uh, there, it's easier to just go around the backside, but we'll end up doing some of that anyways, so. Inside the coven, we can follow the path. There's like a road inside the hallway. And it looks like, yep, more petitioners. And uh, Gawatha here he appears to have a slave. So let's talk to him about it. He's looking for a bribe. Well, let's ask about that human child. Yeah, apparently bought him from some Archmage. Uh, we can uh, talk him down in price. And, uh, you know, he obviously doesn't like him. And, uh, frankly, we're just going to say... Um, <laughs> we're not going to buy a slave. We're not slave traders. We're just liberators. So if that takes what ta that's what it takes to free the boy, then yes, I want fight. And... Kaelin really likes that. And, you know, doing what Kaelin likes appears to be a big part of this uh, Let's Play. Um, we'll start with a Sunburst, try and blind them. And 
and it worked on all three of them. What a pain. Uh, anyway, um, then it's just back to my usual... I, since they seem to have really poor reflex saves, I'm going to actually try to just use spells with actual saves. In this case, Call Lightning. At least until I can get rid of some of the, the uh, weaker guys on the side. Oh, I accidentally killed Gan. Uh, your party members do not care if you kill them with friendly fire. Yeah, I would think that that would piss them off somewhat, but it doesn't. So... For ogres, I think, are usually three-hit die creatures, so... These are not standard ogres, but they're not, uh, hard. Oh, just die. They're worth 400 XP to a level 21 character, so... And, uh, uh, here, look, I'm gonna use another Avasculate from my amulet. Apparently he's an ogre mage, actually, because he just cast Mirror Image. <laughs> a little bit late for that. He's blind, though, so he can't, uh, he can't target me with spells, and he doesn't really have any useful way to fight back. Uh, uh, uh. Alright, we'll just finish him off with a flame arrow. And that's that. And the boy apparently got away in the fight. Okay, well, you know, this is just sort of us continuing on our little uh, adventure of how to get rid of other people in line. So, he has some armor here. Um, let's just say it's unusual armor. I, I've never actually used it, um, but I, and I, I'm not really sure that anyone ever would, but it's not... It's something you actually have to think about, because it has... It's not very good armor as armor. Uh, this the Suntahide. It gives up an AC penalty, but it gives a big bonus to constitution and strength. I can't use it, really, because it has arcane spell failure, so it's kind of a moot point. Um, and really, if you are playing a more of a melee character, you probably have better sources for constitution and strength bonuses. Um, but, you know, if you want to make use of it, that it's there. This next door up here is locked, so let's talk to the guard. And the guard says, well, you got rid of the Ogre Mage, so... Looks like more Uthraki. Let's see what they want. Um... You could bring them the strange meat. <laughs> you could say that you thought there was a privy in here, but you're a mistake. And you can say you will never let them again su uh, sup on the innocent. And uh, Kaelin likes that. And Oku likes that. So, yeah. Um, again, we're just going to have to fight them. Uh, yeah. They have good old-fashioned knockdown, so I'm going to need to try and get Foundation of Stone up sooner rather than later. Fortunately, they're not very strong. Okay, now that we're immune to knockdown, I'm gonna cast another set of mirror images. And once again, I'm gonna open up with a sunburst to try and blind them. And two of them succeeded, so... But at any rate, that slows down the damage that I'll take, and that's really all I wanted out of it. We'll go back to using good old Maximize Call Light. Oh, <laughs> 
They are making their saves against that. The way, if you're not that familiar with D&D mechanics, the level of the spell determines what the saving throw requirement is. So, that they miss the saving throws to a level 8 spell, but are succeeding against a level 3 spell is not so so we're just gonna go back to Ice Storm, which doesn't have a save it doesn't allow for saving throws at all. And it looks like it's just Vlushk left. Vlushk, of course, is blind right now, so he's not much of a threat. I'm just finishing him off. And that's the last place in line we're going to usurp. There are still a couple of people ahead of us in line, but we'll deal with them next episode.